Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for Paramex Discovery 24. My name is Malcolm and I'm delighted to be joining you once again today for the sixth in our series as we build up to the launch of this new version of Paramex Discovery this summer. Now this video tutorial is one that I'm really excited about because it's bringing a new powerful feature to Paramex Discovery and that is on-street parking. So I've got a model in front of me which I'm going to be using to demonstrate this new feature and if I right click on the model and go to map I can see the exact location of it. It's the town of Douglas on the Isle of Man which is a location where we built a Paramex model several, several years ago and updated it to Paramex Discovery recently. Now one of the reasons I've chosen this model is because there's a promenade in the model and that promenade has a lot of on-street parking. Uh, along there. If I go to the satellite image, I can see that. So you can see there are lots of vehicles uh, parking in this model. So it's a good option for this demonstration. Now I'm going to go back to my Pramix Discovery model and zoom into that location of the promenade. Now previously we haven't had the ability to model the parking explicitly so what we've done instead is create a zone uh, along the east side of the promenade here and just have vehicles going into these short links which represents the parking uh, but it doesn't model it exactly. But now with this new feature we can model the parking and I'm going to show you how to do that now. The first thing is to select the links or a link where we want the parking, the on-street parking to take place. And then the properties at the bottom, I've got an option there uh, called parallel. And I can turn that on. And this creates a parallel on-street parking along the length of that link. And it automatically creates those uh, parking bays for me. So parallel is one option, but I can also uh, create a perpendicular uh, parking and we can see I can do that very easily again by selecting the link and perpendicular and you saw from the satellite there was lots of perpendicular parking in this model so I'm going to select a few more links and we can do this by selecting multiple links at once and uh, going to the properties and setting uh, those to perpendicular again and it will update all of those in one go. So very, very quick to set the parking on those links. And that's the first step to modeling our on-street parking. Now the next step then is to assign the vehicles to those links where we've got parking bays. Now if I select zone 51 on the model, I can see that the way that this has been set up so far is using zone portals. And I've got 50% going to zone portal one which is at the south, southern two links, and 50% going to the zone portal two, which is just slightly further to the north there. So what I want to do is select my zone portal one, and instead of having it going to the links on the edge, I'm gonna select some of the links where I've got parking bays and unselect the links uh, going to the original uh, portal. And I'm gonna do the same with two, again by selecting a link with the parking bays, and unselecting the links that uh, the vehicles were originally going to. So now my zone portals are only co connected with links where we've got parking bays. Now I'm going to change the percentages slightly because uh, my zone portal one and two uh, have slightly different number of parking bays in them. I'm roughly guessing a 70-30 split there. And I can close or sorry save that model and then go to the visualize and refresh. Um, when I refresh that, I can see my parking base coming in to the Visualize tab. And just to say that you can turn those on and off in the styles on the right-hand side there. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is to get some traffic on this network and actually see those vehicles parking. So I've started the simulation. I've got one vehicle which has uh, parked already. So what's happening here is that the vehicle is identifying the zone portal which it wants to go to uh, and instead of disappearing off the network it's simply going into one of these parking bays. And Pramix Discovery can now uh, model that. Uh, it can model vehicles driving in uh, head first or it can model them reversing into the parking bays as well. And it chooses the uh, location of the bay randomly. 
Now, to help me identify vehicles which are going to this parking bay, I'm going to use my vehicle marking and turn on uh, vehicles going to zone 51. So if I type zone 51 in uh, my vehicle marking option, I can see that those are going to be highlighted in green and then I'll be able to see which vehicles are going to this zone and actually watch them parking. So let's see if I can find a green vehicle. Okay, we've got one on the network. I've selected that and I can see the destination zone is 51. And if I just click through the simulation, I can watch that vehicle pull in to the parking bay. Now, one thing that's important to remember here is that the vehicles which are parking are destinating at that zone. And then when a new vehicle is generated from that zone, it will pick up one of the parked vehicles and travel to a new destination. So trips going to a zone and from a zo zone, as in a parking bay, are two different trips, not the same trip. Okay, I've got another green vehicle here. I'm just going to watch this to see it park again. And I can see it's coming down, uh, choosing a parking bay at random and pulling in to that bay. Now, one thing that I'm noticing as I run the simulation there is that all the vehicles which are going to Portal 1 are all going into one of those bays and not the other three. So we've associated four links or four bays with Portal 1 and essentially because so much traffic is coming from the north, they're all choosing that first one and not going into the others. So if I want to remedy that, I can simply select Portal 1 back in the Edit Network tab here. Uh, I take a few of the bays off that and then just create a few more portals. So I'll create three, four and five. So I'm associating a portal with each of the links. I can then change the percentages and I'm just setting the percentages to match roughly the number of parking space, spaces in each bay on each link, uh, making sure that they sum to 100. Uh, so I just need to change that top one to 50 in order to do that. And now I should get much more of an even spread across the bays. So if you're finding that a lot of your traffic is going into one link or one bay and not another, then this is a way to uh, adjust that. Okay, so I'm starting the uh, simulation again and just going to check that I've got some traffic going into uh, those other bays now that I've changed the portal. Okay, so I'm just having a look at the three bays to the south of the promenade here. So I'll just zoom in on those. And I'm just looking to see if I've got a vehicle going into any of these to check that it's working. And I've got a green one in there, so that's great. So something that's really important to understand about on-street parking is that as a vehicle is parking, it will affect the traffic around it. In other words, the vehicle that's parking needs to slow down in order to manoeuvre correctly into that parking space, whether it's pulling in head first or reversing in. And the other traffic around that will respond accordingly. So the traffic will slow down and stop behind a vehicle that's parking uh, and then move on once that vehicle has parked. And there's a couple of examples here, hopefully I'll be able to show you. You can see that red vehicle reversing in and that blue vehicle reversing in as well. And the traffic around those vehicles slowed down to allow that to happen. So this on-street parking uh, can have an impact on the overall operation of the network by modeling the slight delay that happens each time a vehicle parks. So thank you for watching this video tutorial all about on-street parking. It's been a bit longer than usual as there's quite a lot to show you with this brand new feature coming to Paramix Discovery this summer. So much so in fact that we're going to do next week's video tutorial on parking as well, but this time looking at some off-street examples. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you again next week.